In my home lab, I'm running many self-hosted applications and virtual machines, most of them on my Proxmox server. And I recently installed some excellent monitoring tools for it. I, I just need to show you. It helps me to keep track of my most critical Proxmox resources like CPU, memory, virtual machines and storage in a clean and awesome looking dashboard. We will cover the installation of a metric server for Proxmox with InfluxDB, secure the communication of all the components with SSL certificates and visualize the data in a Grafana dashboard. I've installed this system on my virtual Linux server running Docker and Portana, so if that stuff is all new to you, it might be a great idea to check out some of my videos where I've shown you this setup before. But don't worry, I'll try to explain all the steps that I've done so you can still follow along. Also, many thanks to Teleport who are sponsoring this video, but more about their solution in a few minutes. First, let me explain the current setup, because I was already running a monitoring solution that collected data from my Linux server into a Prometheus database. And I'm also using Grafana to visualize this data, which allows me to track metrics for my containers and for my Linux servers. But my Proxmox server was still missing in this monitoring stack. I'm not sure why. But hey, at least this was a nice project to make a new video about. So because I was already running a metric server with Prometheus, where all the data is coming in, I first searched for a solution to do the same for Proxmox. So I tried to get the Proxmox data into the Prometheus database. And this is also possible, by the way. So I found a tool which is called PBE Exporter that can connect to the Proxmox interface and publish the data in the Prometheus format. And then you can also set up a Prometheus job that scrapes this data. However, this didn't seem to be the most straightforward method to me, because it is another component that you need to deploy somewhere, and I also couldn't find many great Grafana dashboards for this data source. So instead of getting the Proxmox data somehow into Prometheus, <laughs> I thought there must be a better option to do it. And since Proxmox has a built-in function to send metrics to an InfluxDB or Graphite database, I preferred using this function because it was exactly made for that purpose. Of course, this required me to install a new metric server, either with InfluxDB or with Graphite. But it also sounded like an excellent opportunity to learn something new, because I never really worked with any of them before. Both are viable options, so I'm not saying this is or that is how you should do it. And of course, you could also use the PV exporter with Prometheus, but I have decided to install the InfluxDB2 on my Docker server and use the built-in function of Proxmox to send data to it. I also found a nice Grafana dashboard that someone has recently created and I think it needs a little bit more attention because this dashboard is just great. Maybe I'll do my own customizations to it at some point, but for now it's just a perfect solution that was very easy to set up and it gave me an excellent overview of my Proxmox server and allows me to monitor my internal storage, the hardware resources and virtual machines, so everything that I needed. But let's go in a bit more detail here and start with the first component that I've installed, the Influx database. This will be the main database where we want to store all the metrics from Proxmox, such as CPU load average, memory usage, storage and so on. So everything that Proxmox is sending to it. And we later can use Grafana to query this data and visualize it in a dashboard. And it's important to know that InfluxDB has two versions which are very different. So there are some changes made in the second version that are not precisely backward compatible. But before my initial testing and research, I never really worked with any of um, the InfluxDB versions before. So all of this was new to me anyway. The installation and configuration are pretty straightforward because InfluxDB has a great documentation and some good getting started guides. On the website influxdata.com, you just need to navigate to developers, documentation and then just click on InfluxDB OSS 2.1 docs. This is a great place to start when you never really worked with InfluxDB before. In the install guide, I found instructions to deploy it on macOS, Linux, Windows, Docker, Kubernetes or even on a Raspberry Pi. I have installed the InfluxDB on my Docker server by using Portana. Of course, you can just use any other tool or installation procedure, but Portana always serves me very well and it's easy to create new container resources with a friendly and graphical user interface. 
I've changed the deployment template a little bit. So for example, I didn't use the usual Docker image. Instead, I used the Alpine image, which is usually slightly smaller than the regular ones. It's also important to expose the port 8086, which is the main port to connect to an InfluxDB. And because I want Proxmox to send the data to it, it needs to be accessible from outside the server. You should also store the data in a persistent volume, because otherwise the data gets wiped every time you restart the container. Be aware that the paths for the InfluxDB in version 2 are also using a 2 at the end. And it's also very important to connect the Influx database to a custom Docker network, in my case the front end one. This should be the same way you install the Grafana dashboard later, because when you want to connect these two containers, they should be on the same custom Docker network, which allows you to use DNS lookups with the container's hostname. I've explained this in my Docker networking tutorial, by the way, and it's vital for you to run your home lab and a general understanding of how Docker works and how to connect containers with each other. By the way, if you want to use the Docker Compose to deploy your InfluxDB, or you might just want to use the Compose file as a template to deploy it in Portainer, you will find it on my personal GitHub page when you go to the Boilerplates repository, and inside the Docker Compose folder you will find the project InfluxDB, and there I've written some installation instructions and some guides that will help you to set it up yourself. The Docker Compose template also includes all the necessary settings that I've used. Some are optional, by the way, so you don't need to run the container with the environment variables, which contain initial credentials and settings. You could automate it setting these variables, of course, but I don't like to store credentials inside environment variables somewhere, especially when they are stored in clear text. So that's why I just run the container without them. Because InfluxDB makes it very easy for you once the container is running, you can just open a web browser and connect to it on the port 8086 and this will guide you through a wizard to set up the initial deployment settings in a graphical user interface. Very comfortable in my opinion. One problem though is the deployment is simple, but um, the connection isn't encrypted yet. And many tutorials I found online just stop at this point and connect the database over the HTTP protocol. But this is something I can't emphasize it enough. It is dangerous and not an option for me. Someone could say that metrics aren't critical data and you don't always need to encrypt them. I've seen scenarios where people send metrics and log files over unencrypted protocols like syslog, but in this situation, it's different. Because we also want to connect Proxmox to this InfluxDB and authenticate with an access token. And anyone in between could just steal this token and use it to authenticate to the database to do anything with it. And this is something we don't want, especially in production environments, and it's just the best practice for me to avoid HTTP always, if it's possible. So you now could think about securing this with a reverse proxy, like Nginx Proxy Manager or Traffic. But I believe it's much simpler to use self-signed certificates in your internal network because this is an area that you can fully control and validate your own certificates whenever it's possible. So what I've done is I'm using wildcard self-signed certificates in my home network that are also used for traffic or other administrative web interfaces. And these certificates I have uploaded to my home server where the InfluxDB is running and mounted this folder inside the container as a read-only bind. Important is that you set the permissions correctly. So I gave permissions to my administrative user which I'm running the container with. And this allows InfluxDB to read the mount point and use custom SSL certificates. In the InfluxDB documentation, there is a command that you can put at the end of the binary. It needs to have both files, so the full chain certificate and the certificate key file. And when you are running InfluxDB in Docker, you can simply put these arguments in the command attribute of your compose file or the portainer deployment. They need to point to both files you have mounted inside the container's file system. By the way, if you haven't used self-signed certificates before in your home lab and you're just wondering what the hell is this guy talking about and how does it work? SSL certificates are a crucial topic to learn in IT because it is needed to encrypt information between computers and validate trust. That's why I'm planning to make a separate tutorial on SSL certificates. I've already started to create a collection of commands and guides on my cheat sheet repository on GitHub. There you can just go to the section SSL certs and I've used these commands to create my SSL CA and certificates. But don't worry, I will make a separate video tutorial about it because I believe this is something I need to explain in a bit more detail. Once this is done, I'll leave a link in the description down below, of course. But don't worry, for a test setup of InfluxDB, I think it is okay to 
skip the part with the SSL encryption, just keep in mind that you should always do it when you're planning to use it in a production setup, even when it's in your home lab. So when you set up the SSL certificates correctly, you should see that InfluxDB will use the HTTPS protocol now to expose the server on the same port. And now we can securely set up our credentials and do the initial setup like setting an organization and create a storage bucket. The bucket is where the data of Proxmox should be stored in, so I just named it Proxmox. Once I got the InfluxDB with HTTPS running, which took quite a while to get through it, but it finally worked. I, I then configured Proxmox. Proxmox is one of these essential open source tools I'm using in my home lab. And another open source tool that I quickly wanted to talk about is Teleport. And this is really useful to secure access to your remote servers. May this be on your own home lab or even in production environments you can use in an enterprise company. Because with Teleport you can protect your remote resources like SSH servers, Kubernetes, databases or web applications with two-factor authentication and audit logging. Teleport is entirely open source and free to use in the community edition and suppose you want to use it in your company environment and secure your development or operations teams. In that case Teleport also offers an enterprise version with additional 24-7 support and single sign-on. It's a great application so just download and try it out. Of course you will find a link to their website in the description down below. Okay, back to Proxmox. In the Proxmox UI, you can now enable the external metric server when you click on data center, metric server and just add one. Select InfluxDB, give it a name and then use the IP address or the DNS name of your Docker server where you have installed InfluxDB. Change the port and the protocol depending on your setup and also set up the organization name and the storage bucket where you want to send the data to. This should match all the entries you have set up in the InfluxDB initial setup of course and you also need the access token to authenticate to it. You will find the token in the InfluxDB web UI under data, API tokens and just copy and paste it into the Proxmox matrix configuration. One important thing though is the SSL certificate because I'm using a self-signed certificate it wasn't trusted by the Proxmox server. You will always see this error when you're using a self-signed certificate and there's no option to skip the validation on Proxmox if I'm correct. And so it is important that Proxmox trusts the InfluxDB's SSL cert and this requires two things to be set up correctly. First you need to create a self-signed certificate that is valid for the IP address or the DNS name that you're used in your metric server configuration. So if the certificate isn't valid for my IP address 192.168.05, Proxmox will never trust this cert. This is why I have created my self-signed certificate with a subject alternative name for the wildcard domain and the IP address. So this is correct on my setup, but the second factor which should also be set up is the trust between Proxmox and the CA which has signed the certificate. Otherwise Proxmox doesn't trust where the certificate is coming from. And you need to explicitly say that it should be trusted. To do that I needed to copy the CA cert into the Proxmox server and place it into the user local share CA certificates folder as a CRT file. The file extension is important otherwise it doesn't really work and when you log into the Proxmox server and execute the command update CA certificates this will reload the CA store on the Proxmox server and now my self-signed certificate should be important into the trusted root CA stores of Proxmox and because the InfluxDB cert is signed with it it should now trust the connection. Okay so now the connection between Proxmox and the InfluxDB was working. I know it is it isn't always easy to use self-signed certificates, but I think once you understand how it works, it is a great way to secure the connection between services in your home lab. So again, if that's a topic you're interested in, give me a hint in the comments. If you want to see a separate video tutorial about it, I, I will do it anyway. <laughs> One thing that you should also do is check if Proxmox is sending the data into InfluxDB so you can see it when you go into the database and query the storage bucket. You should see some data here and that's how you can check if everything is working. So how long did this take me to find out and set up? I don't know, may maybe a few hours? I admit the complicated part was the trust boundary between Proxmox and the InfluxDB SSL certificate, but to be honest, I should have known this anyway. <laughs> so it was a great practice and I also could update my documentation pages on GitHub. This should also help you if you want to set it up this way. 
Of course, you can do anything with this InfluxDB and use it to store other data as well. I might do it, because it really looks nice uh, with the web UI. Really cool stuff, but of course, the main reason why I have done it was to have a storage for the Proxmox metrics that could be easily visualized with other tools. And for me, the best way to do it is in a Grafana dashboard. Grafana is a powerful tool to visualize metrics for many different systems, because the way it works is it can query data from almost every kind of data source. I've used it in previous projects to visualize data for my Linux server and Docker, so it might be interesting to check out this video if you haven't used Grafana before. Of course, I link you that in the description, but you can also deploy Grafana with my Boilerplates repository on GitHub. So this will exactly tell you how to install it. So just go to the same folder like for InfluxDB and there you will find instructions for Grafana as well. I've also used Portainer to deploy Grafana. As I said, this was running before in my home lab. Uh, when you want to deploy Grafana, it is important that you put the container in the same custom Docker network uh, like InfluxDB is running in. Because then you can just log into the Grafana's dashboard and use the container's internal host name as a target in the data sources. So in Grafana, just go to configuration, data sources, and then add a new data source for InfluxDB. So now it is important that you change the query language from InfluxQL to Flux. Flux seems to be the new language that is supported in the second version of InfluxDB. I think it's pretty new, so you will see a warning that the supporting Grafana is currently in beta. However, it did work very well for me without any issues, so I think you can already use it in your home lab. The URL should be now HTTPS if you're using HTTPS and self-signed certificates and then the container's internal hostname on port 8086. I know I had one problem with the SSL certificate because the cert I've used for InfluxDB doesn't contain the internal's hostname as a valid subject alt name. Remember when we talked about the trust between Proxmox and the InfluxDB and I said it needs to be the exact same name or IP address in the cert that you're using for the server name? This isn't the case here, unfortunately, so I know could go and recreate the search with the host name of the InfluxDB's container, but I was just lazy and skipped the TLS verification. With this setting, the certificate is not validated by Grafana. So no, in theory, this is a security issue, just to let you know. So that means Grafana will never validate if the data source is really your InfluxDB server. Someone could just fake it. But how realistically is this? Because this is an internal connection between two Docker containers that are running on the same isolated network. I, I know, if you want to be accurate, you should recreate the cert. But I think in this particular case, it's okay to skip the validation for me on my home lab. Uh, once this is done, you just need to enter the same settings as on Proxmox. So enter the organization and the storage bucket and also the authentication token and then the connection should work. You can now query the data in Grafana and visualize it in a dashboard. And just like I said in the beginning, there's a really nice dashboard that I found in Grafana that visualizes most of the important metrics for Proxmox like CPU usage, memory, virtual machines and storage. This is called Proxmox Flux and this is relatively new so I needed to scroll down a little bit to find it but it's using the new Flux language that we've used in InfluxDB2. Really cool stuff so many thanks to Mephisto who created it and by the way why not just give it a great review. You can just log into Grafana via GitHub and give it five stars if you like it. Let's get this a little bit higher on the list because I absolutely love when people share open source stuff with the community so we need to support each other. You can import this Grafana dashboard by using the ID, so just copy it and import it in Grafana. And then when you open the dashboard, you need to select your bucket to see some data. By the way, you can also edit all of these panels and how they are built. This is very interesting, by the way. I don't understand it because I don't know how the Flux language works, but it's also nice to learn it, I guess. So I will take a look at it if I have some time, but the dashboard should give you everything that you need anyway. So the language isn't really required, but it might be important to create alerts for certain metrics. So for example, you can see that my storage volume on my true NAS VM is completely full. That's why I'm planning to build a massive new storage server in my home lab. Uh, but I would like to add some alerts here in the metrics to warn me about certain thresholds like this. I know this is somehow possible, so I probably just need to invest a little bit of time into that. 
But I'm really excited about what you can all do with Grafana. And I believe the time has come that I start looking into creating my own dashboards and learn more about the query languages. Because I'd like to change things and add more outputs for several metrics that I'm interested in. And it also could be nice to monitor performance, resources and other things I'm adding to my new home lab. So expect to see some videos about these topics in the future as well. But for now, I'll leave you with this. I hope you could learn something and it was interesting to watch. Many thanks for watching everybody and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.